Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is a O'Day Mac OS X flaw. First of all, Happy New Year's everyone and welcome to the first video of 2018. Now obviously before I start I apologize for my voice. I unfortunately picked something up over the holidays so hopefully my voice is enough to still get this daily video across. Now today's security story is not the biggest security story of today. That is an Intel issue that affects other processors as well, which I'll mention quickly at the end of this video and I'll cover in more detail soon. However, today is a pretty important story from the end of the year. On December 31st, a security researcher tweeted a zero day vulnerability affecting all Mac OS X systems and apparently all Apple OS systems for the past 15 years. Now, he did not tell Apple, so they have yet to react to this particular vulnerability. There are no patches available yet. Now, the good news is this isn't a horribly serious vulnerability, at least in the context of network execution. This is a local privilege escalation flaw, which means only a local user or process can elevate itself to root. Now, it is still serious, but it just limits what attackers can do with it. I won't go into all the technical details, but essentially this researcher found a vulnerability in one of the kernel modules used for human interface devices, something called IOHID, and he calls this flaw IOHIDEOUS. Basically, if a local attacker can execute code, they can gain full root privileges to your Mac OS. 10 device. However, this vulnerability can only be triggered when users log off, restart, or shut down. So if you're actually on your computer, you will see strange activity. Now, because the researcher released all this information about the flaw and also working proof of concepts without informing Apple, it will probably be a little while before Apple's able to patch this vulnerability. I'll be sure to update you when a patch becomes available, but I'd also make sure that you have OS X's auto updates turned on. Now, again, the good news is this isn't the worst flaw in the world. In order for you to be vulnerable, someone either has to gain physical access to your OS X device as a logged in user in order to run his, his malicious program, or he has to somehow trick you into downloading and running something malicious. And if you actually do it, since this vulnerability either has to wait for you to shut down or force your computer to log out, you might notice some weird activity. For now, the main practical takeaway is to be careful what you download and run on your Mac OS computer and watch out for Apple's patch. By the way, if you want a lot of technical details about this vulnerability, the researcher released a very extensive blog post that goes into a ton of detail on how he found this flaw, how it works, and how he actually got past a lot of security mechanisms, and in general, how these sorts of, of uh, privilege escalation flaws work. So I'd recommend checking that out if you're an information security nerd. Now, previously I mentioned the Intel vulnerability. Uh, there's a lot of news today of a vulnerability that was still embargoed technically that affected Intel processors and later was found to also affect other processing platforms, including AMD and ARM as well. At the time, the news was talking about this being a major vulnerability because it affects basically almost all the platforms that run these processors for the past eight years. Now do know this is a information disclosure flaw. It is also a local vulnerability that if someone already has local access to your system, they can leverage it to read information that they shouldn't have access to. The problem is some of this information could be your passwords or encryption keys, which could be a pretty big deal. I don't want to talk a ton about this flaw today as it was originally planned to go public on the 9th. However, at around 5 p.m. today, Google's Zero Day Initiative did release all the technical details for this rather interesting and new class of vulnerability. So I will talk about it soon. I will say, if you're a WatchGuard customer, you know we have some Intel processors. So we do run some of the processors affected by this vulnerability. However, the, the impact of this flaw really depends on, on what type of platform you have. For instance, if you have a normal desktop computer where people run code, this could be a big deal. However, if you have a closed system that has limited access for users to run code, it's a whole different situation.
In any case, do you know that we're aware of this Intel and AMD and uh, ARM issue, and we'll be sure to let you know more information about the vulnerability soon, as well as how WatchGuard is affected. Anyways, welcome back to a new year. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.